the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... like the tree. I put up a bit of holly, too. And mistletoe, of course, right there over the door. There are so many things to enjoy at this time of year. The warm, friendly spirit, that's most important. The time to be with family and friends. There'll be a lot of holiday traffic, too, as people make the rounds of visits or travelers are making their way back home. On a lonely road in Ohio, two such travelers are about to have the most harrowing experience of their lives. The snow is getting heavier, Skip. I wish you'd slow down. I hope we make it before dark. Oh, I sure don't want to get stranded in this tomb. Oh, 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 no. Skip, what's the matter? We're skidding. I can't control her. Skip, don't stop this. We're sliding into that boat. I'm doing all I can. Mystery drama, A Holiday Visit, was written especially for Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Jorn and stars Lloyd Batista and Diana Kirkwood. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Saturday on CBS Television, one of the most star-studded television events of the year. Washington, D.C. sparkles with distinction as Lauren Bacall, Mikhail Beryshnikov, Art Buckwald, Joe Namath, Pat O'Brien, Beverly Sills, John Travolta, and many more perform to salute this year's honorees. Leonard Bernstein, James Cagney, Agnes DeMille, Lynn Fontaine, and William T. Price. The Kennedy Center Honors, a celebration of the performing arts. Saturday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain, on CBS Television. Listen to this list of very different people. Ronald Reagan, Goldie Hawn, Mary Cunningham, Sugar Ray Leonard, Robert Redford, Baron St. Helens, Jerry Fowell, Pat Benatar, Lake Valesa, Richard Pryor, Beverly Silk, Dan Rather, and Brooke Shields. What they have in common is their People Magazine's choices is the 25 most intriguing people of 1980 in the special year-end double issue of People Magazine on sale right now. People's Double Edition, packed with news, celebrities, and the 25 most intriguing people of 1980, plus losers of the year, names to watch in 81, and other surprises. Don't miss a word or a picture in People's year-end double issue. It's something special. What in the World Happened in December, brought to you by your local Navy recruiter. In December 1775, the first flag unfurled aboard an American warship was hoisted by Lieutenant John Paul Jones on board the flagship Alfred at Philadelphia on the occasion of placing the Continental Navy in commission. George Washington resigned his military commission in December of 1783 and retired to his estate at Mount Vernon, Virginia. December 1851, over 30,000 volumes in the Library of Congress were destroyed in a fire. The highest bridge in the world was completed in December 1929. The Royal Gorge Bridge across the Arkansas River in Colorado suspends 1,053 feet over the gorge. In December 1941, Japanese aircraft attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Six ships were sunk, 12 damaged, 150 aircraft destroyed, and 2,334 were killed or missing. The surprise attack forced the United States into World War II. That's what happened in December. To find out what's happening in the Navy today, call toll-free 800-841-8000. In Georgia, call 800-342-5855. What are your plans for the Christmas holidays? Entertain friends or relatives? Going home to visit parents, perhaps? This is always get-together time. A time when people go home. Home to the families they've left behind as they've made their own way in the world. Joan Bartram made her way from a small town in Ohio to New York, where she worked for a while as a secretary, and then married Skip Bartram, an oil company executive. She hadn't been back to her home in Ohio in 12 years, so it was a particular thrill for Joan when Skip came home one night and said... How'd you like to go home for the holidays? See your folks. Oh, oh Skip, I I'd love it. But can we afford it? Well, the company's sending me to Toledo for a new training program right after the holidays, so the trip is on them. Oh. We'll just leave a little early and be with your folks for Christmas. Oh, what a surprise. Oh, I'm going to call Mother this minute. You don't want to just drop in on them and make it a surprise? And have them fade away? No, no, I want to give them something to look forward to. Well, well, maybe you're right. Oh, it's 
been 12 years since I've been home, and you've never... Hello? Hello, Mother? Oh, Joan! How are you? Just fine, dear. Mother, Mother, are you sitting down? No. Why? Listen, Mother, get Dad over to the phone. I want him to hear my news. Henry, come here. Joan, are you pregnant? Oh, no, Mother. All right, dear. Your father's listening. I'm coming home for Christmas. Coming home? Yes. Yes, Skip has to be in Toledo after the holidays, so we're leaving early. In time to be with you for Christmas. That's the best news I've had all day. Joan, I... Your mother's doing her thing. She's... She's starting to cry. And so am I. But I have to hang up now. I'll let you know when we'll arrive. Okay, darling. We'll be waiting. When can we leave? Well, I'd like to get away by Saturday. We'll have to drive. I'll need the car in Toledo. Let's see. We ought to get to Runyonville by... Well, the 23rd. The map uh, shows the end of the interstate. What do we do when we turn off? Well, let's see. Uh, we go north on 84, it looks like. Yes. yes, north on 84 to Hamilton, then 42A to Blue Mountain, and we keep on that to Runyonville. Oh, I don't know. It looks as though the interstate keeps on going. Well, look there. Yeah, uh, according to the map, though, there's a proposed extension. Well, it's been finished since the map came out, I guess. What if we stayed on this? Well, we'd go straight to Runyonville. It looks as though we'd save about, uh, about 20 miles, too. <laughs> so we're in luck. We'll stay on it. It looks as though, well, maybe it's your folks a lot sooner than we thought. <laughs> starting to snow. Oh, we're going to have a white Christmas. Well, I hope it doesn't get too thick before we hit your folks' place. Skip, how far have we come on this highway? Oh, about 40 miles. Have, have you noticed anything strange? No, uh, you're thinking the same thing I am. Hmm. There hasn't been a sign or a turn off since we got on this road. Yeah, I noticed that. And come to think of it, I, I don't remember seeing any cars passing us in either direction. Doesn't it? Natural. <laughs> well, this road's going anywhere. They're keeping it a secret. Well, I'm getting a little uneasy. Maybe we ought to turn back and take Route 84 like we planned. Oh, I hate to do that after we've come this far. Now, this road's got to come out someplace. I see we got about an hour before dark. And the snow is getting heavier. I, I wish you'd slow down. I hope we make it before dark. I don't want to get stranded in this. Oh, 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 no. oh the skid, skid, what's the matter? We're skidding, I can't control it. Oh, let's just do something. Oh, we're sliding. I'm it's doing all I can. You put any more tinsel around the tree, Harriet, and it's going to topple over. I don't see how you can sit there so relaxed. Why are you so nervous? The children said they'd be here sometime today or tomorrow. They should have been here by now. Only because you think they should be. If anything was wrong, they'd call. You know that. Oh, no, you're right. I'm just so excited about having our Joan home for Christmas. <laughs> I can't relax. Well, I think I'll take a stroll in the snow. Need anything from downtown? No, dear. I've had everything in for days. I just wish they'd get here. They will, Harriet. They will. Now, you stop worrying. Worrying isn't going to get them here any sooner. Oh, oh my head. Joan. Joan, are you all right? Well, what happened? Okay, can you straighten up? Oh, here, here, let me see. Uh, try, try twisting it a little bit this way. Oh, oh. oh there. Oh. There, it's free. Oh. How do you feel, huh? Dizzy. Oh, we, we crashed into the boulders. Uh, can we, uh, will the car move? Oh, pray. Oh, oh thanks. 
Catherine. Well, if I can back her off. Yep, I better get out and take a look. Uh, um, oh, that does it. What's the matter? Uh, two flat tires. Oh, no. And only one spare, naturally. Oh, dear Lord, what are we going to do? We're miles from anywhere. Uh, at least the snow's letting up a bit. <clears throat> oh, we can't just sit here on this this ghost road. Oh, well, where will we walk? Hey, Skip, look. A light. Oh, yeah. Oh, about half a mile away, I'd say. It must be a town. Hey, do you think you can make it on that leg? Oh, yes, yes. I'd hop on one foot to get out of here. Well, we can phone your folks. Tell them we'll be a little delayed. We can probably get the car towed in. Well, it looks like we'll have to stay till morning. Oh, maybe Dad can come pick us up. We can't be far from Onionville. We can pick up the car tomorrow or the next day. Oh, that's Christmas Day. Oh, that's right. Hey, what are we sitting here chatting for? Come on, come on, let's move. find a garage, too. At least we can get the car off the road for the night. It's so still. Hello? Anybody here? It's so dim. One bare bulb. Well, pretty skimpy merchandise, too. Hello? Wow. Whew, place seems deserted. Yeah. I don't see any payphone. Or any phone, for that matter. Hello? Anybody here? Oh, well, we'll, we'll go someplace else. There's got to be a restaurant or a tavern in this town. Hey, come on. Well, I, I know this isn't Runyonville. Oh, I hope not. Looks like a quaint little place, but awfully deserted. Boy, they must pull the sidewalks in at five in the afternoon. Oh, the, the sky's clear. Oh, look at those stars. Wow, I haven't seen them that bright in a long time. There, there don't seem to be many stores. <laughs> Mostly houses. Well, we're not on the main drag. Maybe we better go ask directions at that house there. No sense wandering around a strange town. I, I guess we should. They'll let us use their phone. I'll I'll call Dad Collect. Hey, listen. Hear that? Singing. Of course, it's a carol concert. That's where everyone must be. Well, come on. Let's see if we can find them. <laughs> hmm. Well, I give up. I don't know where that music's coming from. We've covered so many streets and nothing. Yeah, no one. Oh, hey, honey, you're shivering. No, I'm scared. Well, there's a hotel across the street. Let's go there and use the phone. There's got to be one there. This is a ghost town. There's no use wandering about anymore. It's a ghost town in the middle of Ohio. I wonder. You know, you might be right. It could be one of those, um, restorations. An antique village, and if it is one, then there's got to be somebody around. A caretaker or a watchman or someone. I mean, let's try the hotel. Oh, well, I was wrong, I guess. The hotel is just as deserted as everything else. And still no phone. Oh, I wish I had that CB radio Paul offered me. I always thought they were a nuisance, but that sure would have gotten us out of this mess. Hey, come on, come on. Let's look around upstairs. Every room's empty. Not a stick of furniture anywhere. Yeah, it's about what I expected. What was that? Well, it's, it sounded like something hitting the roof. Oh, Skip, let's, let's go back to the car. I'm too frightened to stay here. 
This place is just too spooky. Yeah, come on, you don't believe in ghosts. It's not ghosts I'm afraid of. There's another one. Well, you something sailed past the window and landed on the ground. I- I'm going down and take a look around. I'll come with you. I'm not staying in here alone. Can you see anything? Not yet. There's nothing out here uh, except a couple of green logs. Over there, see them? Green logs? Yeah. Moss covered. Looks like they've been laying there for years. But, Skip, there's no snow on them. If they'd been laying there for years, they'd be covered with snow. You think that's what hit the hotel? Well, how many logs this big don't just fall out of the sky? Well, just take me back to the car. Now, now, honey, there's no sense getting panicky. But we're alone in this town or amusement park or whatever it is. And at least there's shelter. We'll stay here for the night, and we'll just try to get to civilization in the morning. You want to stay here? We might be murdered in our sleep. As if I could sleep. Well, dear heart, there's nothing else we can do. We're sleeping in the car is foolish when we're... Uh-oh. The lights. Every light went out. Well, that settles it. We're not going anywhere now. But the whole town's out. There's not a light anywhere. Yeah, Seems to be clouded over, too. See, the stars are gone. Uh, come on. Come on, let's go back inside. We'll be safe in there. <laughs> we'll curl up in the lobby furniture and try to sleep. Uh, I won't <laughs> shut an eye. Wondering who or what turned off those lights. a popular joke. Where were Skip and Joan when the lights went out? Not only in the dark, but in a strange Midwestern village. And just two days before Christmas, a time when they should have been enjoying the warmth of a friendly fireside, the pleasure of holiday decorations, the music of a Christmas carol, things that most of us are enjoying these days. But for them, isolation in a cold and darkened hotel. We'll learn what this curious town holds in store for them when I return shortly with Act Two. Person to person Heart to heart Together we can move the world If we each do our part By helping care For the children To nourish and to heal Those in need Please send your check or money order to CARE, Box 576, New York 10156, or local CARE office. This is Delta Airlines. We're ready when you are, Chicago. Ready with Delta nonstop to Tennessee and Carolina. Ready with five Delta nonstops a day to Memphis. Ready with three Delta nonstops to Nashville. The most going and an early evening nonstop to Knoxville. Ready with nonstops and through jets to Raleigh Durham and Greensboro High Point, Winston Salem. Chicago for flying with us. Delta is ready when you are. Joan and Skip Bartram faced the prospect of spending the night in a deserted hotel in a strange and 
darkened town. A town apparently without inhabitants. Could it be a restoration of some kind? A sort of Midwestern Williamsburg? Under normal circumstances, it might be a lovely place to spend the Christmas holiday. But Skip and Joan are anxious to get to her parents' home and friendly family warmth. They spent the night in the sparsely furnished lobby of the hotel. And now it's morning. Skip. Skip. Huh? Wake up, honey. Oh. It's daylight. Oh. oh, my aching back. Oh, that's the hardest couch in the world. I didn't sleep all night. Come, come outside. I, I want to show you something. No, can't you bring it in here? Oh, stop being silly. There are footprints in the snow, and they're not ours. Footprints? Yeah, look out the side window there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they go around the back of the hotel. Well, that means somebody's around here. Come on. Well, they're small prints. It must be a child or a woman. Well, they lead toward that barn. It's funny, I, I didn't hear or see anyone. I was awake all night. Well, there aren't any prints leading away from the barn. So whoever made them is still in there. Quiet. Not a sign of life anywhere. Well, let's go in. It's not like a private house. Anybody here? It's so dark and dingy, Skip. Skip, let's go back out. I don't like this. Well, somebody's got to be here. I mean, the footsteps stopped at the door. Then why won't they answer us? Hey, listen. Well, that was somebody's up in the loft. Coming down those stairs. Oh, good, good morning, ma'am. Uh, we're looking for someone to help us. Mercy. Where did you come from? Well, we had an accident with our car last night. We skidded into an embankment. Oh, my word. <laughs> we, we found the whole town deserted, so we spent the night in a hotel. Oh, how curious. There aren't any beds in that hotel, you know. We slept, or rather, stayed in the lobby. I'm Skip Bartram, and this is my wife, Joan. We were wondering... Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm Mrs. McKinney. Oh, we were wondering if this is some sort of uh, a restoration. I mean, there were lights on last night. And, and we heard Christmas carols. Oh, yes. Isn't the music lovely? What do you mean by a restoration? This is Taylor Town. But there's no one living here. You're the only person we've seen since last night. Yes, they've all gone. Each season, a few more left. My husband went last year. I'm the last one here. You live here all alone? All alone in, in a deserted town? It's my home. Uh, well, uh, could we uh, use your phone, Mrs. McGinnis? Joan wants to call her dad to pick us up, and... Well, I've got to get a tow truck for the car. Oh, mercy me, there's no garage or tow truck. Oh, but there's a pay phone at the railroad station. We never had phones in any of the houses. Just wait till I finish upstairs and I'll show you where it is. I don't know if it works, though. I think it's just there for effect. I wonder what she meant by that. Well, who knows? <laughs> I just feel better now that we've met another human being. She seems friendly enough. But a little strange, don't you think? Naturally. <laughs> Living alone in a dead town. A ghost town. I wonder how long she'll be. But we could find that railroad station ourselves. Oh, let her be hospitable. A few minutes won't matter. Uh, Mrs. McGinnis? Mrs. McGinnis, are you almost finished? That's strange. Well... I'll see. Has something happened to her? Mrs. McGinnis? Skip, what's the matter? Well, she's not here. The loft's absolutely empty. Well, there's no way she could have gotten out of that barn. Oh, the, there are no windows in that loft. Well, if she did, unless we just imagine we saw and talked with her. No, no, she was there all right. She, she just 
give us the slip somehow. Oh, look, there's the railroad station. Oh, pray that that phone works. Well, I'm not counting on it, but, well, it's worth a try. It looks like one of Bell's first pay phones. Uh, Skip, have you got a dime? Yeah, I think so. Uh, here you are. Well, here goes. Well, so far, so good. Oh, I got a dial tone. Yeah, at least something works in this town. Well, it's only ten after nine. One of them's bound to be home. Ah, it's ringing. Yeah, they're probably looking out the windows, wondering where we are. Hello? Is somebody on this line? Oh, Dad! Oh, Dad, thank heaven I reached you. Who is this? It's Joan, Dad. Joan? I can hardly hear you. Speak up. Dad, it's Joan. We've had an accident with the car. You have to pick us up. Where are you? Well, you'll have to talk louder. A place called Taylor Town. It's practically a ghost town. Do you know where it is? Taylor Town? Look, we'll wait for you in front of the hotel. How long will it take you? Uh, well, it's uh, ten after nine now. About one hour. Oh, we'll be here. Oh, I can't wait to see you, Dad. Dad? Dad? Oh, the line's dead. What's the matter? You look concerned. Dad sounded so funny. I, I expected more of a, a reaction. He was so matter-of-fact. He didn't ask for details or anything. Well, I'm sure he figured he'd find out the details when he picks us up. Mm, yes, I suppose. You know, dear... I have the strange feeling I know this village. Well, not the village so much, but, but the houses. The houses look so familiar. Well, a lot of small Midwestern towns have that turn-of-the-century look. I guess so. We used to go shopping in, in Fairmont, and it was full of the same big houses we had in Runyonville. You know, with porches around the whole front and little filigrees under the eaves. <laughs> like that place on the corner. Exactly. And look who's on the porch. <gasps> Mrs. McKinnis. Hello, dear. Hello. Where did you come from? I don't get any visitors anymore. We wondered where you went. Where I went? Well, I've been here all morning. Sweeping the snow, you know, got to get it off the porch before it freezes. Well, what brings you to Taylor Town? Skip, she doesn't remember us. Uh, uh, Mrs. McGinnis, we met oh, you. You know my name. Mercy, who are you? Mrs. McGinnis, we we met you at the barn this morning, and you said... A barn, you see? Oh, there's a nice one behind the hotel. Won't you come in for some hot coffee? Takes the chill off. Yeah, thanks, we'd like that. Well, come along in, then. I'll pick up the pot. Yes, I don't know. Well, what harm can it do? Look, we, we've got at least an hour to wait for your dad. We might as well spend it in a cozy kitchen. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come out to the kitchen. Hot coffee in a minute with some fresh scones I made myself. She keeps a neat house. And so you know, old-fashioned. It's lovely. Yeah, oh. that's pretty stark. <sighs> Come in and sit down at the kitchen table. I don't have much, as you can see, but there's always something to share. You were planning on moving here, you said. Uh, no, Mrs. McGinnis. I, we told you we had an accident with our car. Oh, that's too bad. But I just called my father. He's coming to pick us up. You, you called your father? Yes, just now. On the phone at, at the railroad station. Oh, mercy, that is a miracle. I didn't know that phone ever worked. And we're happy to enjoy your hospitality while we're waiting. We still can't understand why there's no one else in town. You live here all alone? It's my home. Oh, it's not bad living alone. I get by. Well, we thought it was some sort of restoration. I don't know what a restoration is. A restoration is an old town or house that's 
been restored to look the way it did years ago. Oh, this town's looked like this from the beginning, ever since it came from Scotland. The town came over from Scotland? It's an exact duplicate of Taylor Town in Scotland. The streets and the houses and all the furnishings came from Scotland. Oh, mercy, don't ask me how long ago when you were born here. I guess so. You guess so? Well, I've never been anywhere else. Oh, you're not eating the scones. Uh, I guess we'd better get over to the hotel and wait for Dad. Thank you so much for your hospitality, Mrs. McGinnis. Oh, I'll come along. I'd like to see a modern automobile. I'll just get my shawl. I won't be a minute. She shouldn't be living alone like this. It's made her completely confused. Oh, I know, but, well, there's nothing we can do, though. And she kept offering us scones, and the plate was empty. Well, she's living in the past. Well, I wish she'd hurry. I, I don't want to miss Dad. Well, we've got lots of time. If you said an hour, but, well, we've only been here a few minutes. Oh, I, I wonder what's keeping Mrs. McGinnis. Look, why don't we just go on? She'll follow us. She knows where the hotel is. Well, Mrs. McGinnis? You about ready? Mrs. McGinnis? Oh, not again. Oh, talk about the Cheshire Cat. Come on. Let's get out of here. You want your eggs scrambled or fried this morning, Bill? Well, fried is easy. Oh, I do hope we hear from the children soon. I'm getting awfully nervous. I thought they'd at least arrive last night. But not to call. It's not like Joan. Well, that just means there's nothing wrong, Harriet. If they'd had trouble, we'd have been the first to know. Something's not right. I just feel it. Well, uh, it's ten after nine. If they're not here by noon, maybe I'll call the police. Oh. Oh. I'll get it. Hello? Hello? Is it Joan? Well, uh, Seems to be a voice, but I can't make it out. Joan? Oh, it's a bad connection. I don't know if it's Joan or not. Oh, dear. Hello? 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 Uh, it's no use. Whoever it was will have to call back. We'll just have to wait. frightened. I wasn't before, but now, now I really am. There's something evil here. I mean, no people except that crazy Mrs. McGinnis. But your dad's on the way, huh? I wonder. It's been two hours now. Well, maybe he had trouble. At least he knows where we are. Doesn't he? How do I know? All we do is, is ask each other silly questions. I'm cold and I'm tired and I'm hungry. Oh, Joan, Joan. We may just die here. Don't you realize that? We may just die here. Oh, stop it. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, hon. I had to stop you. I'll, I'll get control of myself. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll just have to wait. Town, expecting her father to pick them up any minute. But Joan's father, as we now know, didn't get the call. And he and his wife are waiting to hear from Joan. It looks as though Skip and Joan won't be with her folks for Christmas after all. Or at all, for that matter. We'll just have to wait to see how it turns out when I return shortly with Act Three. Monday, high-flying comedy and suspense on CBS television as Freebie and the Bean go after drug smugglers in the sky. I got plenty of sources over the board and a foolproof delivery system. When a pretty pilot bails out at 10,000 feet, it's time for Freebie to learn how to fly. Now, what's going on? What are you doing with my airplane? I'm going to get a citation for this, Bean. Trust me. Too bad. Pull it up. Give it some power. Freebie and the Bean, a special night, Monday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on CBS television. 
Running a ski lodge is a family affair. It takes all of us working together to keep it going. So when the cold and flu season hits, it's good to know we've got our Bayer. Bayer aspirin is the only pain reliever our family uses. We've never found anything we could buy that works one bit better to relieve the aches, fever, and sore throat pain. Believe me, in our family, when a cold or flu makes around, it's rest, fluid, and all we need is Bayer. Use only as directed. Terry's Lincoln Mercury in Orland Park, the nation's largest volume Lincoln Mercury dealer, is now hosting a used car cellophon. There are more than 140 late model used cars to choose from. And every Terry's preferred used car purchase includes a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, national warranty. As a special bonus during Terry's Cellophon, every used car sold will be Rusty Jones rust-proof absolutely free. A $175 value at no extra cost. Sound unbelievable? Take your choice of a few remaining 1980 Cougars, each with a range of options and each priced at only $5,000, $999. Shop early for the best used car money can buy. That's Terry's Lincoln Mercury. Over 140 used cars, free Rusty Jones rust proofing, and the 12 month, 12,000 mile national warranty. No other quality used car dealer could offer more. Terry's Lincoln Mercury is on 143rd Street, just one block east of LaGrange Road in Orland Park. This is WBBM Chicago. now is not going to be a very Merry Christmas for Skip and Joan Bartram, apparently marooned in a strange little Ohio town with only one inhabitant. After encountering the elusive Mrs. McInnes for a second time, Skip and Joan have gone to the hotel to wait for Joan's father. It's a cold December afternoon, and it's been a long wait. What time is it? Uh, ten after two. I'm going to phone home again. Maybe there's a reason Dad was delayed. And after that, I'm going to call the state police. I, I should have thought of it before. We're in a real emergency here. They'll tow us out. Come on. But suppose Dad comes out to be gone. We'll ask Mrs. McGinnis to watch for him. Mrs. McGinnis? Mrs. Houdini, you mean. I wouldn't trust her to give Dad a message. Yeah, well, we're getting out of here as fast as we can. Your father or the police, whichever comes first. Okay. Okay, here, try your folks again. It's dead. There's no dial tone. Nothing makes sense in this place. Well, it's no use. It's as hands dead as... Hands up, hands up. Stay right where you are. She's got a gun. You better be kicking off. M -m 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 Mrs. McGinnis, well, why the gun? Uh, a lucky guess. Why are you pointing that gun at us? I want you out of here now. I don't trust strangers. Mrs. McGinnis, you were so hospitable to us before. Why are you... Before? I've never seen you before in my life. Now get out of here. Start walking. Where to? To wherever you come from. I don't allow strangers here. This is a nightmare. You don't scare us. Because I know in a couple of minutes you're going to disappear. What are you talking about? You've been popping up and vanishing all morning. In a few minutes you'll just disappear, poof. So we are waiting right here. Oh! Oh, come on, Joan, she means it. But where can we go? Oh, back to the car. She would really shoot us. She couldn't. Keep going. We're not taking chances with that crazy old woman. But we'll freeze out here. And Dad won't find us. You'll have to pass the car on the highway. <laughs> Nothing makes any sense here. Yep, look back. You're right. She's gone. Uh, we'll be okay here. The motor works. I'll just turn on the heater. Come on, hop in. Oh, there's, there's more damage than I thought. The whole front end's caved in. What a Christmas this has turned out to be. Oh, honey, we'll get out of this. Yeah, let me get the heater going. We might as well get some holiday spirits if the radio still works. Oh, I am so bush. Mm, well, you didn't sleep all night. 
And I didn't get much myself on that wooden couch. I hope Dad comes soon. Yeah. Yeah, we can't keep the motor running all day. Well, I hope Mrs. McGinnis doesn't show up again. No, she wouldn't follow us out here. But lock the doors anyway. Hey, you all right in there? Hey, you too. Huh? Huh? Who's that? What's the matter? Are you two okay? Oh, it, oh it's a state trooper. Oh, we, we fell asleep. Oh, oh, my leg. Oh, are we glad to see you. Anybody hurt? No. Oh, no, we, we must have dozed off. Dozed off and ran off the road. The helicopter spotted your car and called it. Oh, thank the Lord for that. How'd you get on this road? It's officially closed. Well, there weren't any signs about that. It connected with Interstate 40, and we just stayed on it. Had the bad luck to skid into boulders. This extension isn't due to open until next summer. Where are you heading? Romanville. My parents live there. We're going to home for the holidays. Well, you wouldn't have gotten there on this route. It ends about 100 yards up ahead. I'll radio for a tow and get you folks to Runyonville. Now, when did you go off the road? Last night. You've been here all night? Well, no, we went into Taylor Town. Taylor Town? Yeah, right up the road. But it's a ghost town, except for a crazy old woman who lives there. Uh, I better get you folks to the hospital first. Just a checkup. You know, possible concussion. Oh, no, no, no. We're all right. My wife's ankle was twisted, but once we got out of the car, she was okay. We do not need a hospital. You say you spent the night in a place called Taylor Town? Yes. There is no Taylor Town around here. I've lived here all my life. And there just isn't any place called Taylor Town. But right up the road. You look for yourself. We were there all night. I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, maybe you better look. Oh! <gasps> oh. There's nothing there. There's no village at all. No, ma'am. The road ends at that vacant field. Not a town as far as you can see. How are they, Doctor? Well, no sign of concussion at all. No injuries except abrasions on the woman's ankle. Yeah, well, what about that story about spending the night in a village called Taylor Town? Oh, hard to say. Huh, maybe they did. Oh, they must have imagined it. Yeah, they show no signs of exposure. They only think they were there through the night. They made it on the road only a couple of hours. The helicopter spotted them two hours ago. They went to a village named Taylor Town. They were hallucinating. Well, hallucinations quite common in extreme circumstances. Mirages in the desert. Well, anxiety can produce them. Then you think they spent the night, like they said, in a village that isn't there? Well, they had an emotional experience. Physically, they're fine. I see no reason to keep them here. They're better off going home to the woman's parents. <laughs> A police car is driving up. Joey, Mother! Oh, Mother! Are we glad to see you? Oh, Mother! We were just about to send the police out looking for you when you called from the hospital. Oh, I'm going to send that state trooper a whopping Christmas gift. I got his name and badge number. Skip, it's so good to see you again. Oh, same here. Thank you, Kevin. You're both okay. Come on in, everybody. No use standing here in the cold. What happened, Dad? We thought you were coming to pick us up in that place called Terror Town. Uh, that's what puzzles me. We never heard from you. The phone rang early this morning, but no one was there. Oh, I know I had a bad connection, but I was sure I heard you say you'd meet us. You seemed to know where we were. You mentioned this Terror Town. There's no place like that around here. Where exactly were you? 
I've never heard of it either. But we were there. I know the trooper thought we were loony. Oh, I don't know what to say about all this. Why don't you both just relax? I've got a buffet all ready. We'll have cocktails and you can tell us all about it. That's a good idea. I'll get your suitcases up to the guest room. We had to leave all our gifts in the car, but they're towing it in tonight. So we'll have them in time for Christmas. Oh, they don't matter, dear. Having you here and safe is what's important. Now, you just relax and enjoy the tree while I get things ready. You must be famished. Oh, it's so good to be home again. And at Christmas time, everything's so pretty. Yeah. Ooh, that's some tree. I just love the decor. Skip. Look. What? Under the tree. Look, come closer. Oh. The little village set out under the tree. Cardboard houses. And look, look at the hotel. It's Taylor Town. Mother and Dad got this set when I was a child. I'd forgotten it. Every house. Every street is just the way it was. The railroad station, the little store, and... <gasps> Mrs. McKinnis's house. Uh, J- Joan, wait a minute. We weren't... <laughs> we couldn't have been there. That's what the trooper said. What happened to us? Oh, hey, I'm getting the chills. Look at those pine needles from the tree. Those are the green logs that hit the roof. I wonder. What? Mrs. McKinnis. Could she be? I. I think she disappeared for the last time. Well, what should we tell Mother and Dad? I, I don't know. I, I think we've said enough. I don't know what happened to us last night, but we better stop talking about it. I guess you're right. Well, here are the orders. You can pour the wine, Will. A holiday toast, everybody. <laughs> oh, I see you're admiring the village under the tree. Oh, we haven't set it up for years. <laughs> we used to put it up regularly when Joan was a child. Lately, we've just had a table tree. Ah, but this year, with you both coming, we went all out. Big tree, everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and it's lovely. <laughs> the detail in those houses is exquisite, isn't it? Yes, yes, very, uh, very realistic. It was imported from Scotland. It's been in my family for years. Well, here's to a wonderful holiday visit. Merry Christmas, everyone. If there were an explanation for everything... Where would the magic in life be? I think we'd all lose interest if everything were cut and dried, neatly packaged, just right. We need a bit of amazement now and then to soften the blow of reality. Skip and Joan left reality for a brief period, and it gave them something to remember all their lives. I'll be back shortly with a closing holiday thought. Winston Churchill, Albert Einstein, Nelson Rockefeller, Bruce Jenner... Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci. These people, and many other brilliant, talented, creative people, overcame a form of learning disability. This is Pat Collins for the Foundation for Children with Learning Disabilities. There are over 10 million children in this country who are learning disabled, and they can be helped to overcome their learning differences. We owe it to them and to ourselves. Some of these children can be our country's future doctors, lawyers, artists, scientists, and politicians. You can help children with learning disabilities. Please send a contribution to SCLD, 99 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. That's SCLD, 99 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Holiday lights are twinkling everywhere. Every city, town, and village sports its holiday decorations. Busy shoppers push through the stores, and children wait wide-eyed for that magical evening. It's Christmas time. 
We hope your holiday season will be merry and bright. And may all your wishes for the new year come true. Merry Christmas. Our cast included Lloyd Batista, Diana Kirkwood, Joan Shea, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I know you swore at me. What kind of a chump do you take me for? Well, well, well I, I'm sorry about the accident, but you know I didn't mean it. I, and besides, you know, you and me, well, we used to like each other. What are you talking about? Look, I was the best safe cracker in the city, and you was the smartest detective on the force. You was out to get me, and I was out to beat you. But there was nothing personal in it, eh? Each one of us was only doing his thing. Hey, man, that's why you got to get me out of this. Why should I? Because you know I didn't kill him. I don't know anything of the kind. Oh, look, man... I was going to say, look me in the eye and say that, but I can't because you can't. Well, you know I'm not a killer, and you know that I didn't kill him. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. the Tribune at breakfast. On those cold, snowy days, I really appreciate the convenience of Tribune home delivery. There are lots of reasons more and more people are turning to home delivery of the Tribune. And here's another good reason. A special home delivery offer. The Saturday and Sunday...